All right, so here is another key concept to understand about modern uh, finances and how things work. And this is called the carry trade. And in this example, I'm going to be using the US dollar and uh, the Japanese yen. But this could be almost any kind of security nowadays, as you are able to use your capital, your initial money in your account, and then use it as uh, a deposit to control a larger sum of money. And in this example, as I said, I'm going to be showing a US dollar Japanese yen forex type of a transaction, which is a foreign exchange. And this, these kind of transactions can be done in split seconds. They can be done by uh, individuals with small accounts with maybe $10,000. And uh, they can be done, they're done by banks and large institutions and, and hedge funds. But the, the concept behind it is very important to understand because it has uh, ramifications and it, it, it feeds on itself. So let's get right into it. So you're, you're, let's say you're an individual and you have a capital of $10,000 in your account. You can use that as a deposit uh, and leverage and buy a much, a much larger amount of currency or securities. Now, I, I'm not suggesting, I'm not explaining this to, to get you to do this or to, uh, to encourage it in any way. In fact, this is a lot of uh, where a lot of the problems come in the mispricing of uh, assets around the world uh, because of the low co cost of money in certain places and the higher cost in, in other places and the leveraging of accounts and capital. Uh, so if you, if you use this initial capital as a deposit and you, you can buy more than what you actually own. So with $10,000 and these, these, these ratios, how much a company will allow you to purchase with this initial capital changes quite frequently. But let, for this simplicity's sake, I'm making it a 10 to one uh, example. So with $10,000 he's controlling $100,000 and he's using, uh, he's buying $100,000 and selling the equivalent uh, in Japanese yen. And in this example I'm going to show you what it looks like if he was to make this transaction at 110 yen per US dollar. So there are two things that happen here and one is based on the equity value of the contract of the trade and uh, and then the other concept which I'm trying to explain here is the carry trade and that's the amount of interest that he gets paid and it's usually done on a daily basis for holding this particular type of contract and uh, so first let's go with the equity which is quite simple it's just a difference between the price that he bought it at and the price that it's currently worth so in this example, I'm saying that the, the individual bought at 110 yen per US dollar. So his cost for the, the $100,000 is 11 million yen. And if, if the price of the US dollar Japanese yen rate goes down to 100 yen, then he's looking at an equity value, uh, a negative equity value of 1 million yen. If the price stays at 110 yen per dollar, then he's looking at a equity value of zero in that contract, in that trade. If the US dollar Japanese yen rate goes to 115, then he's looking at an equity value of half a million yen. And if it goes to 120, then he's looking at an equity value of 1 million yen. So that's just simply the difference between the price that he bought it at and the price that it currently is. And of course, he can sell the contract and immediately make a profit if it goes to 120, or if it goes to a loss, well, this 1 million at 100, 100 yen per US dollar would wipe out his, his whole capital base. And I'm gonna get into that later, which is uh, why we, we see so many violent moves in asset prices these days. But the, the, the interest here is what is, is important. And let's say that the US dollar is currently paying 3%. And the Japanese 
are paying 25%, that 0.25%, which is a quarter of 1%. If you're borrowing the yen and selling the yen to buy the US dollar, and you don't have to have you don't have to have the, the, the yen in your account even if you have a US dollar account. You could have a Euro account or a Australian dollar account and you could still sell the yen and buy the dollar because they're just using this as a deposit and then they're, you're leveraging your, your assets, your capital. But if you're selling the, do, uh, selling the yen and buying the dollar, then your cost is the, the rate of the Japanese yen, what they're paying. So this is just a quarter of 1%. If the US dollar is paying 3%, then you're able to pocket the difference between those two. So you may wanna you know, pause the video and, and try to wrap your head around that a little bit, but you can borrow what you don't have. You can sell what you don't have and buy something else. You can, you can borrow the yen and use it and sell sell the yen, buy the US dollar, and then collect the difference on those two percentages and you can get that money into your account every single day. And this is why you find, uh, you can look at some charts, I'll show you some charts later in this video, of the Japanese yen and what it did for many, many years. This, this, this feeds on itself because people get paid to sell the yen, buy the dollar, then people just rushed into that trade and then it just became the way to make money and people just put lots of money and the Japanese yen kept getting weaker and weaker and the dollar higher and higher and this was with many other currencies as well and of course this 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 low interest rate that the Japanese charge well it helps them to um, you know their export economy so they encourage this as well but this carry trade, this amount that they get paid to hold, is an incentive for people to come into this trade. And of course, you can get out of it and into it with a click of a mouse. And this same type of, of transaction is going on across many different asset classes. Right now, the, the Fed funds rate is, uh, I believe it's a quarter of 1%, maybe a little bit more now. Uh, but you c banks are able to borrow money very cheaply and then turn around and lend it out at a much higher rate. They get free money this side for basically free, well, close, as close to zero as you can possibly get without going into negative, and then turn around and lend it to somebody else for a higher interest rate, and they make the spread. They make the difference between those two. And this, uh, it says Japanese yen here in U.S. dollar, but this could be the Fed funds rate. And then the, the amount that they charge on a loan or the amount that they uh, get from the treasury. This is you, you can see this happening a lot with um, banks. They'll, they'll borrow from the Fed at a quarter of a percent and then they'll turn around and lend the government the money at a, a little bit of a higher rate and they just make the spread. And they may only use a small amount of capital to do this. But if you have maybe a million or two million or even a billion dollars in your account, well, then you can really leverage it up and get into this trade. The problem is when it reverses. And this is where the end game comes in. When people have to get out of these positions, they have to, if you've bought something to make your profit, you've got to sell it. If you've sold something and you want to make a profit, you've got to buy it back. And one last point that I'd like to make about this carry trade, which we see across, like I said, across all sorts of assets, it is uh, when you're setting the interest rates, you're incentivizing people and it's a form of manipulation. It's a form of centralized command control in the economy. And when the Fed sets their rates very low, they encourage people to come in here and they discourage certain trades. And like I said, the problem is when it reverses. And when it reverses, it's very violent. Everybody's heading for the exits at exactly the same time. And there's nobody to take the other side of the trade. So prices just drop. And why is that? Well, it's because somebody's setting the interest rates. Somebody's uh, manipulating the, the market. 
markets are supposed to be based on supply and demand. A, a country's currency is supposed to be based on the productivity of that country and the the monetary soundness, their assets and what they're doing with their money, how they're saving, whether they're they're spending more than they're taking in. There's supposed to be uh, uh, many more dynamics that come into play that determine by the free market what the interest rate should be. But when it's artificially set, it creates incentives, distortions, and then ultimately it creates collapses and, and panics in prices, which Although they say, you know, they, they, they say, well, we're keeping the Fed, you know, the funds, Fed fund rate at a certain level to promote uh, unemployment or to, to help the government or this, that, the other. They have all of these reasons for their manipulation, which are supposed to be positive. But the distortions that they create are much worse than if they hadn't gotten involved in the first place. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions about this. It's a, it's a bit of a, an odd uh, topic, and maybe if it's the first time you've, you've looked at this type of scenario, well, it might be a little confusing, but if you have any questions, let me know.